a great opportunity within this story to um, portray the little prince in a way that I don't think audiences will expect. It's difficult to, to illustrate on film the poetry of the book. Kind of ironic to say, you know, anything essential is invisible to the eye, and yet we're trying to make a movie about that idea. S'il vous plaît, dessinez-moi un mouton. Marc Osborne s'est dit, on ne peut pas adapter le livre au sens propre, mais il faudrait que j'aille une histoire qui permettrait de protéger ce livre-là. Et Marc a eu cette idée géniale. Et si l'aviateur, si le livre n'était pas connu What if the aviator never found anybody to share the story with Il était une fois un petit prince qui habitait une planète à peine plus grande que lui et qui avait besoin d'un ami. Je me suis dit que tu avais besoin d'un ami So the biggest challenge is really finding a story that will utilize the book and create sort of a, a structure so that the book can be at the heart of, of a larger story. And that's why I, I'm really excited to have this little girl. She's going to be this great way for us to see the book through her eyes. So in, in some ways it gives us a lot of freedom with the material to tell this larger story. Mark had a had an idea to illustrate the book in stop motion and wrap that section with the CG part of the film. This different medium representing uh, the little girl's imagination and it's incredible. trying to create a world that feels like a very realistic storybook. And CG is really a fantastic tool to do that because we can actually create a very sort of simplified and stylized world, but use cues that um, are very sophisticated to help us kind of ease into that storytelling and help us understand and believe the emotional connections between these characters. The big thing is being able to see the clear kind of divisions between the different worlds. The warmth of the aviator and the little prince's world, and then the real world, draped more formal, and the, the grown-up world being uh, an extreme version of that. Cette maison-là a rendu cette maison-ci abordable, afin que ton avenir devienne possible. Oh. The little girl is interesting in that she be begins as a very sort of dour, serious character and finds the child in herself. So I knew my design had to be able to carry that range of emotions. She had to be able to transform from the beginning of the film, from basically grow from an adult to a child by the end of it. The interesting thing about the aviator is that unlike the little girl, the aviator is a child in an old man's body. He's a very conscientious character. He's caring. He's a very, very special character that wants to make connections. But in this world he's living in, he can't. Salut les amis! <laughs> All these characters are very iconic in the way they're presented. It's also a way for us to create this, this, this fairy tale, this storybook universe that um, should feel very unique and should feel like it's in keeping with the, the book. Kind of triggers in your brain when you look at stop motion it makes you believe like it's a fantasy it's like your toys are moving that's why it, stop motion becomes the perfect medium to translate the the passages of the book we wanted to to work with paper because the stop motion part of this story is all about the book and we find that that connection that making the, the whole thing come alive in a storybook way exuberance uh, illustrations are so simple and naive that it was really important to take those bits and interpret them in, in sculpturally in a way that, uh, that still felt like illustrations. 
it's interesting because we, we go from a, a, a sequence that is entirely made up of paper at the beginning and then it becomes uh, more dimensional, but we still keep a lot of the paper feeling. We're going through a lot of trouble to sculpt the heads out of a paper clay, which is very difficult to deal with, but uh, it allows Alex and his team to lay down like a watercolor look on the faces. The book illustrations were done in watercolor, so I wanted to sort of find those characters through watercolor as well. On ne voit bien qu'avec le cœur. I didn't want to uh, to make anything too clean. My approach to sculpting these guys has all been so it's been like an imperfection and a roughness, natural um, handmade feels. So we're using watercolor dyes, gouache, and all these colors that in those types of paint that we can get really vibrant colors to show emotion and climate. You know, a, a very hot desert in a in a scene. So we're not just surfacing every. Um, sand dune with a sand look, we've, you know, we're folding paper and so how do you get that to still feel like you're in a hot desert? Stop motion is all about movement. It's a specific kind of animation that creates a specific kind of illusion of movement and when you're building armatures for a stop motion puppet at a very basic level, it's our job to make the animator's job as easy as possible. So the biggest part of stop motion is just making sure that you've kind of just gone through it just to feel everything out, to make sure nothing that's not supposed to move is not going to move, to make sure your puppets are properly rigged, to make sure you have everything you need before you start. Generally, you know, we can do a second a day, two seconds. It really depends on the shot and the complexity. And if the puppet and if your rigs are all, if everything is working together, I've never worked with a puppet before that had uh, that was covered in paper. That posed a challenge because it's not as flexible as something like foam latex or silicone. Stop motion really evokes those feelings of childhood and so it's always been a great technique because it really taps into those sort of earlier sort of feelings of being a child.